uh, hello all um, let us talk in brief about uh, uh, the compliance in embedded systems uh, so basically as a modern day embedded system designer it is important that we understand the compliance requirements and uh, uh, the kind of uh, regulatory um, compliance that is required uh, to sell the products. For example, if you see um, the products which are to be sold in European Union should have uh, the CE compliance, uh, whereas uh, in US you need FCC compliance. So, um, <coughs> it is uh, uh, important that designer understands uh, uh, the kind of compliance and what are the tests involved in it. So, we know that there are uh, different tests involved uh, to pass the EMC uh, for a particular uh, product. Uh, so, this could be categorized into two, two types where one is uh, uh, the immunity test and the other one are the susceptibility tests. <coughs> Uh, a interference test basically not the immunity test because uh, interference is something which you generate out of the device uh, and uh, susceptibility is something uh, uh, where uh, the external uh, uh, device can cause issue to your product. So, it is important that uh, uh, the embedded product uh, um, passes both interference tests as well as the susceptibility test to have a full fledged EMC compliance. As a part of this uh, um, under the e, under the immunity uh, interference tests and uh, susceptibility tests, there are several tests defined uh, um, by the regulatory bodies. So, now one important test is um, the electrical fast transient. <coughs> So, the electrical fast transient is nothing but uh, uh, a burst of energy um, that is uh, uh, generated and this burst of energy is nothing uh, is could be uh, generated by a, a, an external uh, um, device uh, like example a lightning or uh, it could be within the board uh, where some of the switching components can generate that. So, <coughs> both can cause uh, uh, issues to our board. Now, one of the major problem is that this transient will have a peak uh, very high voltage uh, and uh, uh, a high uh, drive high instantaneous current which can cause uh, uh, issue to a um, embedded system which is working at a normal voltage. Like example, if you have a voltage across the board uh, of 5 volts for a particular interface and if you have uh, kV of voltage uh, that is applied instantaneously, um, there could be a chance that uh, the <coughs> board uh, can have a failure or the particular component that is exposed to this uh, uh, transient could see a failure. Now, um, we need to understand where from is this uh, transient coming. So, uh, the transients basically uh, could be coming up either from external uh, environment or generated internally as we said. When we say external environment, uh, uh, the lightning is one of the important uh, um, source of uh, uh, one of the major source of this electrical fast transient where uh, um, it can damage your board uh, just by um, blink of an eye and uh, um, internal to the board uh, we can have inductive loads or heavy loads uh, uh, which uh, could be switched at a particular frequency um, and or um, at a required a given time uh, which can cause uh, instantaneous change in current uh, uh, causing the um, voltage uh, uh, to burst up and <coughs> to surge up and uh, causing uh, uh, something called the transient and this transient could propagate all over the board um, and it could cause uh, failure or uh, it could cause uh, uh, a component degradation which causes uh, a equipment failure at a later point of time because the degradation is something which cannot be um, like uh, um, found out by the user instantaneously. It can, it can happen slowly over a period of time and uh, uh, suddenly the your uh, electronic equipment might fail. Now, this is how a transient looks like. Uh, so, if you see here a transient would be this way where uh, there will be uh, bursts of uh, um, this uh, uh, transients and uh, post this uh, after the burst period you will have another uh, um, burst of transients that are generated. Uh, so, if you um, zoom this each pulse it would look this way. Uh, so, now here um, why 
such kind of uh, bursts are required is example if you take a uh, inductive load for your uh, um, circuit. So, and uh, let us assume this inductive load is switched by uh, <coughs> a relay. So, now uh, the, uh, definitely when we say switching uh, there will be some debounce that is uh, uh, expected. So, it is not just uh, powered on uh, it is just on and off for a very short duration and uh, this causes uh, uh, instantaneous voltage because uh, mm, the inductive load sudden does not allow sudden change in current which is given by V is equal to L into di by dt. So, the uh, instantaneous change in current because of the load changes causes the voltage uh, uh, to surge up. So, <coughs> Because of these uh, uh, debounce that we are talking of the switch, uh, uh, this, this is the burst that could be generated during that time and then we try to turn on and off the load from the delay after specific uh, uh, from the relay uh, after uh, specific interval. So, uh, this is the interval um, the burst period that we are saying. So, this is how we test a device, this is part of the uh, IEC standard and then if you take a closer look at the transient this is how it looks the transient waveform and uh, uh, there will be a bunch of these transient waveforms uh, applied which we called it as a burst. So, this transient could be very fast, this transient could be slow, this transient could be uh, having a very high voltage uh, example it could go up to 2 kV uh, in some of the cases. Now, the lightning which we talked uh, is a very fast transient uh, whereas, uh, the switching that we see or the high voltage or the over current that could cause due to the heavy loads on the board uh, could be a, a small transient, um, uh, slow transient which can uh, have milliseconds of duration. So, um, the transient is not uh, um, a fixed one, the transient could vary based on the uh, source of generation. So, that is why even the standards you we talk uh, are uh, different uh, um, for testing the EUTs. Now, <coughs> how do we control these transients? So, to control these transients uh, we require uh, a surge protection device. So, the surge protection device works in such a way that uh, uh, it clamps the voltage to a specific level and uh, drives away all the current uh, during the time uh, to the ground and away from the uh, susceptible circuit. So, now <coughs> this surge protection device uh, uh, is uh, very important in your uh, circuits. Now, uh, one has to understand that basically um, for a com for a given uh, uh, electronic device uh, uh, whether it is on the power supply or whether it is on the I O lines uh, uh, both of them are susceptible to these surges. Uh, so, it is important that uh, at the entry point of these uh, um, <coughs> particular interfaces the power or the I O you should have these surge protection devices such that uh, any surge unexpected surge could be driven to the ground and uh, uh, your circuit remains. Uh, uh, safe. And uh, now talking about the standards. So, basically um, there are uh, several standards for these uh, uh, surge protection um, uh, electrical fast transients uh, or the transients. Uh, so, <coughs> IEC 61004-4 which is the most used uh, um, standard across the world uh, uh, um, defines the um, EFT which is electrical fast transient whereas, 61000-4-5 uh, defines the lightning surge. So, as we said basically between the EFT and the lightning surge there is a difference in the um, time period of the surge, uh, the, uh, the uh, burst duration, uh, the um, voltage of that and then importantly the rise time. So, the rise time um, definitely for a fast transient uh, the rise time would be high. So, considering that scenario um, <coughs> that there are several different standards that are defined uh, uh, for the electrical fast transients. So, irrespective of this one has to understand that uh, um, the designer need to have a pr uh, specific protection uh, and then if you if he wants to sell his product or get compliance uh, uh, for a particular regulator uh, uh, he has to um, understand uh, what is coming up uh, uh, on his uh, what could be coming up uh, or uh, suspect what could be coming up on his lines and during the design itself he takes care of such scenarios. 
And these standards if you see basically um, requires that uh, the unit under test or the product designed by the designer um, is uh, tested to um, the peak uh, level. So, example if you see if you if you have used a surge protection in a particular uh, uh, line um, the that these tests uh, um, expose these uh, uh, particular interface to a maximum levels uh, such that uh, uh, the surge protection device should be able to withstand uh, uh, that voltage or uh, that surges. So, now um, these standards use uh, uh, different techniques uh, uh, for providing surges on the power lines and uh, providing surges on the IO lines. Uh, uh, so, for providing surges on the IO lines uh, they use something called a capacitive coupling and for providing the uh, surges on the <coughs> power lines they used uh, uh, they use coupling decoupling network which we call it as CDN. Uh, so, this CDN uh, a transient uh, uh, device would provide input to this CDN and through the CDN uh, you will be providing power to the um, EUT the equipment under test. Now, one important point here is that uh, whether it is <coughs> Uh, CDN or something, um, this uh, um, EFT um, helps us uh, to um, find out uh, the compliance of our device uh, uh, to the real world uh, um, transients that might come up or the board or the transients that might come up on the board. Um, if you if you have uh, like uh, doubts on how a CDN looks like, uh, this CDN uh, is nothing but uh, an external device that would be connected to the EUT. Uh, uh, we can say um, like how we connect LISN uh, to check the um, conducted emissions that will be uh, coming out uh, uh, on the power line. So. Uh, where the, we use a line impedance stabilization network uh, uh, for such tests. Uh, we have uh, coupling decoupling networks uh, where uh, um, the transients would be capacitively coupled uh, to the power lines and then uh, um, it will be provided to the EUT as input. So, uh, that is how we uh, use these devices to couple the um, surges to the boards and uh, it is very important that the designer understands those. Uh, test procedures as well. Um, hope uh, this uh, simple tutorial is helpful for you. Mm, please let us know if you have any comments, uh, um, <coughs> provide your suggestions, uh, subscribe and like to our channel. Thank you.